Hello, Jean's, Jane Adams, 8th graders. This is my original promotion speech to you. I wasn't joking when I said that at promotion tonight. This was the speech I originally wrote when they told me I had four minutes, but then when it changed to two minutes, I had to cut it down, and so that's why you got the poem. But I wrote this for you, so if anyone out there wants to hear it, here it is. Ironically, public speaking is not my thing. By nature, I'm not all that outgoing. Earlier this year, a group of students from Miss Duff's class were talking about what teachers must have been like as students, and they got me all wrong. I was a sit-in-the-middle, don't-raise-my-hand, turn red when called upon kind of kid. I tried to think of good graduation speeches that I've heard, but then realized in all my graduations between middle school and becoming a teacher, I couldn't remember one thing anyone said in those speeches. So that took the pressure off a little, because hey, you won't remember this later. So tonight, I'm going to talk to you about socks. And nightmares, but not nightmares about socks, so don't worry if that's your personal nightmare. Around 14 years ago, around the time most of you are starting to eat mashed veggies for the first time, I taught two boys named Jake and Riley. They were good kids, funny, sort of hardworking in a no-need-to-be-perfect sort of way. Anyway, fast forward about five years, and Jake and Riley are at UW together, studying who knows what. But before they've graduated, they've launched Strideline Socks. Their business today takes them around the world, across the U.S., and has a small display in the Seattle Museum of History and Industry, the Mohai. But if you talk to them, ask them what possessed them to start a sock company, they're kind of like, I don't know, we both like sports, so we really like socks. And they'll talk about how this wasn't some dream they'd had forever, but once they realized it, they then had to learn everything to make it real, because there's no roadmap to founding your own successful sock company. They had to learn about manufacturing, marketing, business ownership, and more and there is no guarantee their business would succeed. That is the moral of successful people everywhere. They have an idea, usually about something that has never been done before, and the confidence to know they are intelligent enough to figure out or even invent what needs to be done to get there. They aren't imitating something someone has done before. It's scary and messy and full of risk, but in the words of Coach Bella Caroli, if all you do is imitate the best, you'll never be more than second best. I have other not-so-widely-known examples, like Tara, who took me flying when she was in 8th grade and later became one of the first female PhD candidates at Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University, studying human factors in flight. I still don't totally understand what that means. Let me be clear, though. I'm not saying you have to go out and start your own company or be the, fir be the first major whatever somewhere. Taking those risks can happen in ordinary careers, too. I'm a teacher like three generations of my family before me. There's nothing new about a female teacher. But sometime last August, Miss Colleton and I had a conversation that went like this. Hey, we should start an honors eighth grade science option. Yeah, let's do that. What does it look like? I have no idea. Sounds good. Let's move forward. I'll let you figure out who each of us was in the conversation. We had no idea how to do this. Most middle schools in the district don't have an honors science program, and neither of us had taught eighth grade science before. We could have waited a year, putting a plan in place, learning the curriculum, but then the 50 of you who took honors, plus the many more of you who did some honors work, wouldn't have been as challenged. All we had was an idea, the confidence that we could figure it out, and 50 plus 8th graders counting on us. There were times when it was frustrating or we were tired, but we just kept going. In the words of author Barbara Kingsolver, sometimes what keeps you going is the road you're on and the fact that you know how to drive. I wasn't lying when I said I didn't remember any graduation speeches, but I do remember something in a speech by Professor Sarah Lawrence Lightfoot at the start of graduate school. She said that every year she has nightmares at the start of the school year, but she knows that these nightmares are just because she is excited about the coming year, that it is when, the ne when these nightmares stop that she'll really worry, because that's when she knows that teaching will no longer be exciting for her. Any time you take risks and try something new, it will be scary, and you may have nightmares. Embrace the uncertainty, have faith in yourself, and don't run from your fears. Congratulations, 8th graders. Have a good night.